In this video, I will explain to you every detail you need to know about the black market auction house. In WoW, not real life. The black market contains many unobtainable items, such as the Swift Rosashi Raptor, the Swift Zullian Tiger, anniversary mounts like the Obsidian Worldbreaker, and even every single tier 3 piece from the original Nax Remus. My channel is basically dedicated to this niche function in WoW, and I've spent roughly ugh, 200 million gold on it at this point. Ugh. But that's okay, because during my long, long hours sitting there, I've learned quite a few things. Tips, tricks, I guess you could say, and I'm happy to share this information with you boys. That being said, if you like the video, please consider subscribing, it will help me out a lot. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Where is it? The newest one that came with Dragonflight is located in Valdragon, just beneath the main city. However, with every new expansion comes a new black market, and you can always use the last expansion's black market, which in this case is located in Revendreth, Shadowlands, if you want a change of scenery or you're just a straight up masochist and love Shadowlands. Quick post-editing side note, I tried out the black market vendor in Revendreth and it doesn't seem to work, although you can click it and it's got like the little buy symbol. So I'm not sure if it's just down at the moment or they've disabled it, but usually you can use the last expansions. But you know, no losses here. Who, who the fuck wants to go back to Shadowlands? But to each their own. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave that up to your discretion. I don't judge. So you can be either level 1 or 70 to use it, or anywhere in between. In Shadowlands, they changed it so it required max level, which really, really sucked for me. But they've since reverted that, and you can just park your level 1 there with a gold cap and, you know, buy until your heart's content. Continuing with the basic stuff, what times do the auctions start and finish? New auctions are posted at 11.30pm server time every evening, and the auctions will begin to finish between 1900 and 2130 server time. Each item on there will have its individual timer of very long, long, medium, and short. Very long is 12 hours plus, long is 2 to 12 hours, medium is 30 minutes to 2 hours, and short is under 30 minutes. These timers are all random for each item, so some will finish earlier and some will finish later. So what's the best server to use? Each battle group, a collection of linked realms, will have a different selection of black market loot each day. You can see which realms are connected through the link I'll put in the description below. In my experience, you want to stay away from the full pop realms, such as Ravencrest and Drenor. There's a lot of gold buyers, <coughs> boosters, sorry, there who have a shit ton of gold to blow through and don't care about paying extortionate prices for stuff that really isn't that worth it. And for that reason, I'll be placing full pop realms in F tier. High pop realms can also be guilty of that issue, so I'm putting them together with full pop realms. Low pop realms used to be good, but a lot of people had the same idea at the same time. Hey, let's move to a French low pop RP realm, surely the prices there will be cheap. But that's the problem, a lot of people had that exact idea at the same time. So in some cases, low pop realms are even worse than full pop realms price wise. So I would take it with a grain of salt, because there are some instances where low pop realms are good and you can get stuff for really cheap, so there's still hope for you yet, but it can also be the complete opposite. So for that, I'm placing it in B tier. And just like the fable of Goldilocks, the middle is just right. You can't go wrong with a medium pop realm. They have the most stable and low prices in my honest, humble opinion, and I have a lot of characters on them. So for that, they are going in S tier. Okay, now that we're done with the basics, let's get into the more nitty gritty stuff. Each bid on the item you want to get will go up by a minimum of 5% of the current price. So bidding on a 300k item will put it to a minimum of 315k. This goes all the way up to something like 9.1 million, as you can't bid higher than gold cap, which is 9.9 .9 million. The only items you'll see at gold cap are the old ZG mounts, like the Tiger and the Raptor, the played Proto Drake, and sometimes a Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent, though with the buffs in Dragonfly, it doesn't really go for that much anymore. If you want one of those mounts, I recommend sitting at the Black Market Auction House at 11.30pm with a stacked wallet and a prayer and instantly G capping that shit. Which leads me to the best method of bidding. Now, you can't snipe on the black market, i.e. bid one minute before the timer goes off to secure an item. Every time you bid, the timer gets reset to either 5 or 15 minutes. I believe it's random, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I know that it definitely gets reset. And this is to prevent sniping, which is honestly a healthy and good thing that Blizzard did for the black market system. Now, for my next tip, there's a good analogy about a frog for this. So, hear me out, let me explain. There's an urban myth where if you put a frog in a pot of boiling water, it'll instantly jump out. However, if you put it in cool water and slowly heat it to boil, it will remain there until it dies. Now you might be wondering why I'm talking about frogs and boiling water. So the point I was trying to make was, 
And if you're having a bidding war with someone, it's easy to get too invested and bid far above your means or what your limit would have been. However, if a mount is sitting at 20K and you want it and you instantly bid your max, which is, I don't know, 400K, that would deter a lot of people from challenging your bid, meaning you get your loot uncontested. This obviously doesn't work in every situation, but it's a good thing to know and it will come in handy sometimes. Typically, I'll just wait until an item is on short and then place a bid and just hope no one is there to contest it. Although more than likely someone will be there to challenge you, you just have to hope they don't really want the item. There's a couple of tools out there to assist you in your decadent spending habits. You can complete a surprisingly fun quest chain in New Dalaran where you get Katie's stamp whistle that lets you summon a portable mailbox toy. This is good for bidding wars so that you can get your cash back without actually having to leave the market and it's usable on all characters via the toy tab which makes it better than the profession mailboxes. Although in Valdraken, I must say, there is a mailbox basically outside the black market auction house, which alleviates a lot of the issues. And uh, in Shadowlands, you had to do like a two minute flight, which was really annoying. There's a portable black market radio you can get from a daily quest in Mechagon, where you learn a blueprint and it lets you use the black market auction house anywhere and it has something like 20 charges and it's really easy to make. And lastly, rogues have their own black market auction house in their Legion order hall. So yeah, that's pretty neat, I guess. Another post-editing side note. So I wanted to get my facts straight, so I triple checked everything I've uh, stated in the video. And the order hall black market auction house appears to have vanished. I've looked it up and this happened in Dragonflight. Now I'm going to leave this bit in the video because I feel like it's a bug and it will come back. Uh, I don't think it's coincidence that all this stuff happened <laughs> during Dragonflight. So yeah, there is normally one here that you can actually bid at. But it looks like with Dragonfly, it seems to have disappeared. We'll see. It should come back. I believe in Blizzard. Well, this bit is up to you. If you see something you really want, then however much you want to spend is entirely up to your discretion. However, if it's an obtainable mount that has a low drop chance, I wouldn't bid over 400k for them. It just doesn't feel worth it to me. You could say my specialty is the unclaimed black market containers, which is very sad to say. They contain the entire loot table of the black market auction house. It's a gamble, but you could get extremely rare, unobtainable items for reasonably cheap prices. Or you could open up an Elwyn lamb for 500k. Who knows? Typically, you shouldn't spend above 200k on these containers. They're just not worth it, unless you uh, run a YouTube channel based on them. <laughs> Like I said earlier, the ZG mounts and the Plate Proto Drake will almost always go for gold cap. Same with the Sharabanga mount most of the time. Tier 3 pieces can go for really cheap, depending on the server you're on, except for the Warrior and Paladin shoulder pieces. They'll normally go for at least 1.5 million gold to 5 million gold. If you can snag those for under a million, then you definitely carpe diem the fuck out of the game. Well done. Pets and toys will typically go for between 5k gold to 100k gold, depending on the rarity. Some of the trading card game pets will go for like around 300,000, such as the Swift Spectral Tiger, because they resell for much higher, roughly 500k. Last but not least, TCG mounts like the Never Rocket and the Woolly White Rhino. They'll be bid up to around 2 million gold because they sell for around 3 million gold in the actual auction house. So it's up to you whether you just want it or you want to try and resell it, but as always, it's a gamble. To summarise, medium pop realms are the best, though some low pops can shine a little bit brighter or dimmer depending on your luck. Don't blow all your gold on stuff that's still obtainable. Unclaimed black market containers are a scam unless you're incredibly lucky. It's best to bid on an item when it's short, but remember that sniping doesn't work. Overall, I think the black market auction house is definitely worth checking out. You can sometimes find some really cool rare stuff on there for really cheap, but I wouldn't spend all day there like I do as at the end of the day, it's just a gold sink that Blizzard uses to deal with inflation and to give you some shiny goodies because your gold is basically getting deleted since there aren't actually real auction posters. It's just, you know, NPCs. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps. Uh, please make sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful in any way. And yeah, if you want to watch the <laughs> my legacy of the Black Mark Auction House where I've spent over 200 million gold, then feel free to click my channel and go through and binge watch all the videos. Enjoy.